right, so I have a sign-in sheet going around, and if you sign in for me, I'm going to tell you what that's going to be about later on. Okay. I always keep notes. Mm -hmm. And then I have a few little handouts. I have a PowerPoint handout. So take a white sheet and a red sheet and pass it around. I got a couple of little flyers and stuff up here. Just a little extra that I give out to um, to my students, my mentees. I give that out to them as well. And so just a little. Now I didn't tell them anything about you, so you got to know that too. Okay, okay. gotcha. Okay. 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 And basically, I invited you on here because you talked about entrepreneurship, and I just wanted to give y'all some information on, I wanted her to give y'all some information on how she got started with her business, how she stayed positive and kept going and, and, uh, and you know, overcame any, any issues that she may have encountered, so that's why I invited her. So I'm Trevonda Henderson. I am the owner of Bonell Salon and Boutique and Bonell International Corporation. And what I usually like to start off with so I can kind of get a base of fill of the room is a little icebreaker. So what are you exactly here for? What you here for? Accounting? Mm -hmm. Okay. Money check. Business management? Business administration. Business management. All right, ma'am, back there in the back. Business administration. Perfect. Business administration. Business administration. And you, sir. Business management. All right, so perfect. Nice, nice. All right, so I always like to ask, what are you exactly here for? So then that way I can get a feel of the room. Now, when I was here with Ms. Bridget in the MBA program, some of my best resources were my colleagues. So I hope you guys have that bond because we had a bond and that was back in 2012 and we're all still connected now. We're all still connected. We still talk, we still chat, and that colleague could give you that insight, that info that probably some other people can't because they're really not on that level. And I'm going to talk to you all about that at the end. So your colleagues could mentor you. Your colleagues can uplift you. Your colleagues can inspire you. They can put an impression on you. Um, how many of you guys follow each other? Anybody on social media? Who all on social media? So everybody on social media, do y'all follow each other? Y'all follow one person? All right, so before the end of the night, usually I would like call out your Instagram, because everybody do Instagram, nobody do Facebook. I still do. I mean, Some people do Facebook. <laughs> All right. So, so it's a combination of both. But you guys should be following each other. You should be uplifting each other. You should be motivating each other. Because I know when I look at Miss Bridget Page, I'm looking at the houses she's selling. I'm looking at the excitement on the people's face. I'm like, man. I talked to her before. I'm like, I want to shadow her because I want to get that experience as well. Your colleagues can introduce you to a whole nother arena. Mm -hmm. She introduced me to this class. She introduced me to Kiwanis. She was my very first teacher in the MBA program. And I guess that was, what, 2010 yeah. or something? Yeah. And she's mm -hmm. opened up so many doors and lined me up with so many people since then, from the Kiwanis to the Junior League, like she said earlier. And just the app, she just, it just keeps flowing. So you never know who you are in the midst of. Mm -hmm. The person that you're behind right now could be on in that next business that the HR could be hiring for. Mm -hmm. The next person that's got that business could be opening doors and setting up, oh, you need to go talk to this banker for this long mm -hmm. to open up that next door. So you never know who you're in the midst of. And so that's why it's, it's important that you stay connected with your colleagues. Mm -hmm. You've got to stay connected with your colleagues. One thing about me is I told you I'm the owner of Odell Salon and Boutique. Bonell International. I got my degree from Southern University in political science. Then I came back to University of Phoenix and got my MBA. In 2000, I decided to open up a business. My husband has always ran the business. He never worked for anybody else. I think he said he washed this just for about a week. <laughs> and he said that didn't work. But it was a long hustle. And so he's always had his own business. So I saw him hustling. So I was like, I said, well, you know, if he's doing that, you know, I could do it. So I started selling little things and stuff at my job and selling things to people. And I said, okay. 
I'm gonna create my own name. So I created my own name, which I came up with Cornell. I told him it was half his name and half mine. Sometimes you gotta make the man feel <laughs> So I went ahead and I created the name, but I didn't know exactly what I wanted to do with it. So I took it and I trademarked it. You could trademark it through the Sec Secretary of State, you could do a 10 year trademark or a little, nothing. Less than $100, I think it's like $75. Mm -hmm. So if whatever business thing that you have, if you don't want nobody else to take it, go ahead and trademark it, all right? So then after that, I created a mobile boutique. I said, okay, I'm gonna do the mobile boutique thing and kind of go through and get with my girlfriends and set up and sell and do the whole wine thing and dress and style and do all of the above. So I did that, and then after that, in the midst of that, I was public speaking. I started, I had my first public speaking gig when I was a freshman in college back in 1992. I shouldn't have said that, some of y'all might have said that. I wasn't even born then. But, but 1992, I had my first little speaking gig and I went back and I spoke to some high school students. And I was like, you know what? I kind of like that. So I started back off with that. I got my first um, storefront. I moved into a salon and opened up my little boutique inside that storefront. And then I said, okay, now I went from the mobile to the brick and mortar. Mm -hmm. After that, I ended up getting the salon and expanding and opening up a salon and boutique. I ended up converting that boutique over, took over the salon, and then put it all in one. I did my own book. I created a workbook and guide to success. So I published that. I did a self-publishing and copywrote that. Did all of that from scratch. So I'm an author. I'm a mother. I have a six-year-old daughter that is just very, very energetic and is always going to some cheer dance. I go by her schedule now. And then I have a husband that I've been with for 20-some years. We've been together for 20-some years. We got married in 06. He said we've been married for 20 years, but I'm like, I ain't had a paper. So I was like, you know, I'm going according to what the papers say. You know, he's like, no, oh, no. So been with him for 20-some years. I am an educator. I am a success mentor. I be on YouTube. I am Vonda, the success mentor that shares inspirational strategies for those that are desiring and seeking more. I also nonprofit. I have this whole salon, and the salon does nothing on Sundays, right? Salons do nothing on Mondays. So on Sundays, I believe in giving back, and so I collect different hygiene products, soap, deodorant, toothpaste, and face towels, and I give it back to the homeless. Because I believe that I got this building. It was a blessing that I got it, and it's not doing anything on a Sunday. So after I get out of church, I have my daughter. We go, we make bags, we do little bags and put little things in them, and we take them out and we give them out to people in the community. It's also teaching her a lesson of gratitude. Mm -hmm. Because sometimes she thinks that she's supposed to get everything that she wants, right? And we're used to giving everything that we want. We have kids in here. So we're used to giving. So I wanted her to appreciate the things that she had, seeing other little kids without me, taking her toys and giving back, mm -hmm. taking the shoes that she had and giving back. Mm -hmm. I wanted her to start to appreciate those things and start giving back. So I asked you earlier about your Instagram and your, who you're following. I asked that because on this sheet that I handed out, I have my information on there. I want you to follow me too. I believe it's always a two-way street. Mm -hmm. So I want to follow you mm -hmm. because I don't know who I'm in the midst of. I mean, y'all could be like deep and be like, women, mm -hmm. you don't know me. You ever have people you'd be like, you don't know who I am? Mm -hmm. You don't know me? Mm -hmm. I don't know. But I know I want to follow you because you could be the person that inspires me. Mm -hmm. I believe in getting inspiration on all levels right. from everyone. And what you do, what you do, who you may know, what you may post may be the very thing that may uplift me that day. It may be the very thing that be like, you know what, I need to share that. It may be the very thing mm -hmm. that could pull somebody out of the hole. I had a student that was long gone from our school and she came all the way back because she was about to commit suicide. She mm -hmm. said she would have just jumped off the bridge or just ran off the bridge. Mm -hmm. But she came all the way back to come find me because she was like, you know what? You be posting stuff, and I just want to see if you're real. Mm -hmm. So you never know who you're lifting up. Mm -hmm. You never know who you're encouraging or who you're motivating. So 
I gave you my one Monell. So I have everybody email. Even if you don't follow me, that's cool, because I got your email. I'm gonna go follow you. I got your, your login. You ain't gotta follow me. I'm gonna go follow you. Because I want I want that inspiration. I want to know who I'm connected with. I want to know what you're about to do, what business venture that you have in store. Because maybe I know somebody that can link you up with somebody. Y'all have to take time in the very moment that is going on. This Bridget knows a lot of people. <laughs> We know now. We know. <laughs> you know. I mean, y'all, y'all know. Y'all know. When I say she knows some people, she know a lot of people. She know a lot of people. She got a lot of connections. She working and doing houses, right? Some people with houses got to get good credit and stuff, right? You think she know a little bit about the credit stuff? You think she know a little bit about the banks and who not to go through and who to go through? Right. She knows some people. So you have to take advantage of the moment, you have to take advantage of the opportunity, take advantage of the people that you always have in the midst of you. You gotta be ready. I gave you a list of the top 10 things. I always keep notes with everything that I be talking about, because I be like, mm. I be having write down stuff, because I believe when it's given to you, if you don't use it, you, you lose it. So I like to write stuff down, because now I have to be prepared. I gave you a list of things because a lot of times we procrastinate mm -hmm. and we're not for sure what, what our why is or what drives us or what pushes us. And how long is your program? Six weeks. Six weeks? Mm -hmm. How long is the entire oh, business okay. course? The, the entire? Three years. Three and a half years. I'll be finishing up this one. So after a while, you may get a little discouraged sometimes, right? And you may forget what's your why. You may forget what drives you. You may forget what motivates you. And sometimes we have those temp wise. And some people really like temp wise. Those temp wise could be your husband, boyfriend, your boo, whatever y'all want to call it, partners, whatever it want to be. That could be a temp wise. That's a no no. That's a no no. The divorce rate is like sky high right now. So that boo is not guaranteed to be there all the time. That husband is not guaranteed to be there. So that's what I call a temp why. They're not there all the time. Some people say our kids are why. You know, I'm doing it for my kids. I do. Sometimes I can sell mine. I can get, my, get that little bit away. You know, I can be like, you might want to donate it. You might want to look. You might want to adopt. You know, you want to come take them up a lot. I'm like, please. So your kids can't be your why. Correct. Because Eventually, if you do love them to death and they grow up, mm -hmm. they're gonna be gone. Mm -hmm. And it's gonna be empty house. Mm -hmm. So that's another no. Mm -hmm. That's a tip why. Another thing is the money. You say, oh, I'm doing it, I'm doing it for the money, I'm doing it for the money. <laughs> y'all, y'all heard Steve Harvey tell you over and over again. If you're doing stuff just for the money, eventually you're gonna get tired of it. Mm -hmm. If you do things just for the money, then sometimes, I don't know about y'all, but sometimes that money get funny. Mm -hmm. I got that whole salon, and sometimes you got that, everybody getting their hair done. Oh, you know, income tax time. Everybody, Christmas time. Mm -hmm. You're like, no, oh, I need the money for this. Your money get funny sometimes. Mm -hmm. So that's another no. Mm -hmm. That's a tip. But when you realize what your true why is and what motivates you, why you're here at school, Especially when you get that downtime, I have my um, I have some students because I teach pharmacy tech as well at Fordis College. So I'm the program director there. So I have students that have them do me a little sheet, like what's your why? Because when it gets to that point where they get down and out, and they really be like, you know what? I gotta work. I can't do this. I can't do that. I ain't get a chance to do that assignment. Then you need to realize what's driving you. It's not just what's going on right now. It's what you're trying to get years from now. It's what you're trying to do a year from now. Mm -hmm. Human resources, what you're doing three years from now, what you're doing five years from now, that's what you need to be looking at. So you need to look and see, okay, you know what? My why is when I meet that young lady or that gentleman and I'm interviewing them and they give me all the right answers and I'm like, yes, I'm about to hire you. That's when you feel good about that person. You be like, you know what, yeah, that's, that's your why. When you get ready to open up that business and that first customer come in and you make that first dollar, you be like, yeah, that's, that's your why. When you sit and you realize that even if y'all in class and you get that test back and you be like, oh, I knew I could do it. I knew it. This bridge be giving a test and I'll be like, man, I don't know. That's your why. 
when you finish it up, I don't know if y'all do group, group projects and stuff. Sometimes you know your why by your gift. You may be the person that starts off the paper, the person that's the good closer. When you figure out your why, it's going to open up all kinds of doors and all kinds of avenues for you. But you got to be ready for it. You got to be willing to walk into it, and you got to be willing to take that pressure. Sometimes we crumble under pressure. They have a thing, it was three things that could stop you from doing what you're supposed to do, along with this 10 things that you got to keep doing. But one of them is that we crumble under pressure. We crop under pressure. We like, well, when it gets too tough, we like, man, I can't do this. No, I give up. Who? Who was that? Somebody said earlier. It'd be like, I don't have no empathy for that. Who was that? <laughs> <laughs> I ain't got no empathy for that. Because at the end of the day, you gotta keep going, right? And I'm sorry, since it's just us. Our ancestors did a lot, and I'm sorry they ain't had no cell phone, and they still did it. They ain't had no automobiles back in the days. They still did it. They got beat up. They got home. They got all of the above. They still did it. So we talking about probably another under pressure. Sometimes I look at them, what type of pressure? My daughter think her pressure is a little makeup. <laughs> you know, we, we tripping though, because what pressure? But a lot of times we crumble, we break down. And I don't know, but my husband said, we made for this. Yeah. We done went through a lot. Mm -hmm. We made for this. All right? We got people that's following us. We made for this. So it, pressure is, it should be nothing. A lot of times we fail to commit. Be like, you know, I'm going to start something and I'm going to stop. I'm going to start this and I'm going to stop. I hate to use this man, but we got one man that commits to everything that he do. He commits to that suit that's just all jacked up, that's just leaning to the side. <laughs> he commits to America is great. <laughs> he commits to the hand gestures and, you know, he commits to thinking that he's the best man in the whole wide world. But he commit. It don't matter how many times he filed bankruptcy. Somebody <laughs> said it was like 14 times. May have been four or five times. But he didn't file bankruptcy. He lost all kinds of money, lost all kinds of deals. Mm -hmm. But that man knew way back then he was going to be president. Mm -hmm. He didn't, he committed to it. He was like, I know. Mm -hmm. I know I'm going to have Trump Towers. I know I'm going to have this. I know. And he expects nothing else but that. We got to expect that. Sometimes we don't expect that within ourselves. Right. Sometimes we'll be like, well, you know, if it may have. I may pass this class. I may get that job. I may, you know, that may, it may. We don't even commit to nothing. We got to know that it's ours. I know I see a lot of different individuals, and I run into a lot of different cultures, and it seems like every other culture knows that it's theirs. Mm -hmm. We're the only one that's infinite. Yep. That's right. We're the only one that's infinite. Another thing is that we got to be a Comfortable with getting out the box. Comfortable. Yeah, gotcha. Yes, we got to get out of it. Sometimes we stay in that little bitty circle. We stay with our close little net of friends, and we leave it at that. But you got to step outside. You got to step outside. As entrepreneurs, the opportunity is always there. We just got to step into it. A lot of times, the opportunity for us to study, the opportunity for us to get the information we need, the opportunity is always there. But sometimes we just have to do it. You got to be comfortable with stepping outside. You got to be comfortable with pushing yourself. You got to be comfortable with challenging yourself. You got to be comfortable with going above and beyond. I heard um, David um, G O G G I N Googling. He was like, "Some man is supposed to be the most strongest man in the world." Mm -hmm. I just heard it from this um, Muslim lady. If y'all get a chance, check him out. He ran this marathon with two broke feet. Come on. He ran the marathon. His body and stuff has completely just dysfunction. It's lost his use of his kidneys. He lost use of everything. But he was so committed because at that point, it was the brain that was functioning. Sometimes we just go off our physical being and we just letting it be. But your mindset can take you to a whole nother level of things. And a lot of times we miss it. So he ran this marathon with two broke feet, but he told himself, you know what, I gotta get it. I gotta do it. By the time he finished, he get to the house, his wife put him in the tub to call his mama, and they said, you know what, you gotta get to the hospital because your body is shutting down on you. He said, you know what, I just wanna feel this pain right now because I actually did it. And he, his mind told him that, you know what, you got a little bit in you. You got a little bit more in you. And I know y'all all done been there because we've all been through some things, and you know what, we're like, man, I can't do this. But then a couple months ago, you just got over that hurdle. 
Sometimes we forget, they call it the cookie jar effect. You forget what you've already been through. And when you went and got that cookie and you be like, oh, okay, yeah, I did good. You gotta go back to the cookie jar again and get that praise, you go back again. Because we go through so much, sometimes we forget. You know what, I have been through, I have been through worse. I can get through this, I done did this before. Something else has happened. I done been through this. I don't know about y'all, the lights have been off. But I still, I done made it. My car done broke down. I still made it through that. You get hit with obstacles all the time. I got hit with obstacles all the time while I was in school. When I, was in, when I came back to get my MBA, my husband told me, you know, what, what you doing that for? He said, you ain't got to do that. What you doing it? I'm doing this. You ain't got to do this. You, whatever you need, I can give it to you. And I'm looking at him like, he went to Morehouse. Well, yeah, he's a little smart little dude. <laughs> he did the business thing. So, yeah, he's a smart dude. But my thing was, okay, you learned it from the street. If I get the book sense of it, then we could put that together and we could do something. Mm -hmm. He decided, and it came in handy because I was able to throw it back at him because he was like, you know, no, I gotta pay, we're paying all this money for you to go to Phoenix and we're paying all this money and I can give it to you for free. But at one point in my husband's career, he decided to make shoes. So he was making shoes and doing shoes and so he was like, you know what? Every time I deal with these people overseas, they keep saying we was doing an SU shoe, y'all, and they sent the blue, they sent the SU back upside down. No, okay. They sent the blue off, so we could, they could never get the SU. Like, right. they ain't know who SU was. <laughs> so then he was like, y'all, we're going to cut out the middle, man. we just going to go ourselves. Mm -hmm. So we actually, in 2008, we ended up going over to China. Mm -hmm. Went over there about five times, and then Mita came and just shook my world up. Mm -hmm. But that's a different story. <laughs> but we, I, so he go by himself, and so I don't go now. But eventually, we're going to send her because we're preparing her for that. So we went over there, made our own shoes, made flip-flops, did four different styles of shoes, imported those over, go over there, meet with the manufacturers, and cut that all out. Cut, cut out the little man. Mm. Got to step outside the box. Because when we got ready to go, the um, swine flu was out. Mm. We went, got over there, got stuck on the plane. I was like, Lord Jesus, you didn't send me all the way over here. We got stuck in Tokyo. I was like, well, we're going to be quarantined over here, mm. and I ain't going to be able to get back home. We made it through that. A week later, Nagan went over there and he got stuck for about a week. I was like, well, Lord, I said, well, thank God it wasn't me. <laughs> I, knew, I had to put it on Nagan. Oh, so I had to put it on Nagan. But I'm like, thank God it wasn't me. Oh, but, you, but you never know. You never know. You got to know what you why. You got to know what drives you, what puts you out there. My drive is my SSI. I ain't talking about the check. Today. I ain't talking about the check. The SSI. I believe in sharing the information. I believe in serving and giving back, and I like to make an impact. So that if anything that I say, you may not use it now, it probably pop back in your head a month from now, five months from now, a year from now, whatever it is, but you need to be making impact in the people that you're around and people that you're among. Because then that exposure opens up doors and stuff for you. It opens up avenues and stuff for you. So you, you got to know your why. The opportunity, like I said, is always there. We just got to jump out at it. They told us we was a fool going to China. Like, why y'all gonna go over there? My baby ain't gonna come back. My mama thought it, somebody gonna go over there and take me or something. No. <laughs> but if we don't step outside the box, we never would have knew what we could do. We went over there, y'all. Guess for how much? We stayed over for 10 days. Guess how much? Mm -hmm. $900. About $900. Wow. That's including the hotel and everything. The hotel was like two weeks before, hundred something dollars. Wow. How many of y'all go through that? How many of y'all get that on your income tax? <laughs> How many? So it's, it's doable. Now I said, oh, I can go to Paris. I can do all of that. Now, now I realize the door is open, but sometimes my mind is closed and we don't, we don't see no further than what's right there. Right. But you can do it. You can do it. I sit in the MBA class and I was like, man, I can't do this. My husband said I can't do it. And I'm like, man. I said, no, but I'm going to stick with it. As soon as we got to... Um, we got to one of the courses on um, economics, and it was another course, whatever it was, it was talking about going outside the country and how I had to, you had to get these, get your items tested for lead and so forth. All that information, I took it back, and I was like, <laughs> see that the book part, this, this is the book part. Yeah, there you go. Yep. You got the street yep. part, you can get the, but yep. it's the book part. Right. So then he was like, oh, okay then. So we they able to put it together. The opportunity, y'all, is there. Social media. You starting a business, you're putting yourself out there, LinkedIn, if you're looking for jobs. How many of y'all got a LinkedIn account? 
Why two? Yeah, we have to talk about that. You got the LinkedIn account <laughs> that could open up a whole yeah. nother avenue yeah. for you. It's that professional That's Facebook. That's true. For those that don't even want to do the regular Facebook, mm -hmm. don't knock Facebook because Facebook could be your advertising. It could be your opportunity for sales, with right. your business and stuff. It could open up a whole nother door. It doesn't have to be that that old Facebook that used to have all the foolishness on there. Now you could kind of, you only see so much nowadays. Right. It's not like it used to be. So don't be scared of the, the social media. The social media is a job just like any other business. Yeah. You have to run it like a business. You gotta know when to go on, when to go off. You gotta know who not to put on your page. I got my sister, Lord Jesus, we exact opposite. I call it gangsta boo. You don't see this video. Right? I call it gangsta boo. But she know, because she totally opposite. And I know when she come through that feed, I just don't <laughs> Because I already know I'm going to get a call because I know she didn't hear something, but she just said something. You know, it's so something like, it is what it is. I accept the fuck who she is. Right. You know, but you got to be careful of the stuff that you have on there. They know that's my sister, so they be like, you know what? <laughs> did you see? Did you see? So I'm like, that's up. So social media could work in your favor. You got all kinds of apps that's out there. I have an app now. How many of you guys, anybody have a business already? You do? What you do? Uh, I do catering. Catering, all right, perfect. So you got all your food on. You do vegan? Well, no, well, I do I do a lot of social clubs and MC clubs. Awesome, who else had a business? It was you, ma'am? Mm -hmm. What you do? Cleaning the mill business. Cleaning, perfect, who else had one? Everybody getting started and stuff, mm -hmm. right? So cool. But the app, when you go on, it's called When to Post. Mm -hmm. okay. And it gives you a time when to post. I have it on my phone. Okay. It tells you when to do it. It's a little, it's a little, like a clock. Mm -hmm. It's a little blue app. And when you go on the app, it tells you post, do not post. It tells you what time to post. Mm -hmm. So when you link in under your Facebook or your Instagram, it tells you when you basically get the most heat. Okay. So when you, it says right now, I post again at 11.15 tonight. Come on. Mm -hmm. So it gives you like three different times of when to go in and post. You use that to your advantage. So when you got, at that time, you go in and you post all your cleaning stuff. Mm -hmm. You post the stuff that you didn't already did. Because then that's the time where you're going to get the most people that's going to be able to view what you're doing. Mm -hmm. You got to use the apps. Website, that. when to post. Mm -hmm. When to post. It's a little blue, blue and green clock. That's on the front of it. It's awesome. We got all kinds of apps that are out there that helps promote and help build your business. Your website. Who has a website? Y'all got a website for your business? You can find cheap websites. Vistaprint. How many of y'all use Vistaprint? I got all my little flyers. Vistaprint got a nice little website that's less than $20. Sometimes you have to invest. In yourself, mm -hmm. they have. I just got a website a couple of years ago by um, my husband told me wix wix.com with. Oh yeah. And they set up everything for you. Mm -hmm. Very nice website. Come on. Yeah. It's out there, and not that expensive. You gotta start marketing your business. You gotta be able to brand your own self. I talked to a group of uh, plus size uh, models one time, and and I was telling them about branding themselves. A lot of times when we think of brands, we're just thinking of Nike, you know, clothing lines, you know, Lady Chanel, you know, Gucci, all this stuff. Uh -huh. We're thinking about that, but you know what? Your name, you're your own brand. As soon as you walk out the classroom, what do they say about you? I know when she, she said she don't have no empathy, they probably be like, man, she needed it a mother. As soon as she walk out. And then they could be like, you know what? She a sweetheart. She a sweetheart. So your brand is basically what they gonna say about you when you walk out. You need to market yourself, regardless of if you're starting a business or you're thinking about doing your own business. Now is the time to start marketing your own self. You gotta be able to push your name out there. You gotta be able to watch what you're posting because everybody's watching. Y'all was talking about HR people looking at all your social media. They checking you out. So you gotta start marketing and putting your name out there. Advertising, how do y'all market yourselves? Those with the business. Social media? That's what. I got a sheet, and then I also <laughs> talk about it in my, uh, my uh, book, different ways to market yourself. When you go get little stuff, you can take this, you can have it out there, you can put it 
put it out there. You can give it to everybody here at the school. Mm -hmm. Free marketing. You could take it and you could go ahead and donate it. Back to school event. Bridget was just doing that yesterday. You could have gave a whole stack up Miss Bridget. They could have put it and gave it to everybody that was there. You could have got involved in different organizations to get I out. Had children free market. Huh? <laughs> I didn't want to child calling me last night because they had my business card. But I put it in the same back to school bag. <laughs> she kept calling me at the block. Oh, 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 oh. See the block of them. Free marketing. But the marketing there is there. You gotta get involved in other organizations. <laughs> Even if you got a cleaning service, you can be yeah, like, you know, hey, I want y'all, I want to market my business. Could somebody in the classroom help you? Yeah. I got a magnet. Could you put this on your car for a right. week? Mm -hmm. By the time, because next six weeks, y'all y'all all together? No. Y'all switch up again? Right. But then that's you could. So you're making connections mm -hmm. every six weeks. Y'all should be building up up your um, email link. So then that way, you can everybody email this in your classroom. Everybody email this in your next classroom. Everybody, hey, I got this going on. I'm cleaning houses. I'm cleaning buildings. Hey, I got this event going on. I'm catering. I'm doing this. Hey, I'm looking for a job. Do y'all know anybody that's hiring or that's looking for something? I'm looking for something in HR. My sister-in-law just started doing her own HR on the web. She go on Facebook and do her own little live little videos giving tips on how to get hired, doing tips on how to um, market yourself, how to set up your resume. I met a girl in my boss chick group. That's all she does is resumes. Yeah, yeah they, I, some of my um, my friends, they created a boss chick um, group. So we all get together once a month and we share different ideas on how we could boost ourselves and how, and we promote each other. Mm -hmm. And we push each other and we promote each other. Every you know couple of weeks, this is your time, so we finna hit you all on Facebook. We're gonna push your ads, push your ads. Mm -hmm. So free advertising, marketing is there, your kids. You can start your own business, you can put your fly in every, and take it to your kids' school. Mm -hmm. Free marketing. It's out there. The opportunity for entrepreneurs is out there every single time. We just got to go out there and we got to get it. And we just got to make the move to go get it. And sometimes, yes, we get dry, we get discouraged. But what we got to do? Got to shake it off and get out there and get it. Like she said, and what? I heard the man on the um on the um motivational thing. He was like, "You gotta get out there. You gotta hustle and you gotta grind." Mm -hmm. At the end of the day, you gotta hustle and you gotta grind. My husband has never had a job, and the mortgage still gotta get paid. Mm -hmm. And I don't ask him about it. <laughs> Cell phone bill still gotta get paid. He's gonna see this. He's gonna be like, "Really?" I don't ask him about it. We still gotta hustle. Still gotta get paid. So you gotta keep, gotta keep grinding for it. Whatever you desire to do, y'all, we gotta go get it. Mm -hmm. It's ours. We could do it. My student even told me today. She was like, "Miss Henderson, when you hesitate, fear creeps in. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. As you hesitate more and finish your school, then what? More fear creep in. You'd be like, I could put it off. I'm gonna sit out for a little bit. Then more fear creep in. Now I gotta go back and I gotta how I'm gonna juggle this, how I'm gonna juggle that." But the more you procrastinate, then the more you let the devil, opportunity, haters, mm -hmm. then the more you let other things come in and interfere and step in. Mm -hmm. It was hard going through that MBA program. But my colleagues the, that I was with, my class, we pushed each other mm -hmm. every six weeks. We were lucky that we had each other all the way through. We pushed each other every six weeks. Now you know, come on, mm -hmm. come on. You can do this. Come on, no, we can do this. No, let's let's get it. Let's get it in. You got a downtime. Okay, I got you. The other one take up for you, but you got to get back up. Yep. <laughs> you got to get back up, and you keep going. You keep pushing. Half the time we only use half of our brain. <laughs> we don't even you we don't even study like we should be studying. Y'all probably be like, how she know how much I said? <laughs> because if y'all like me, I'm like, I ain't like to read. I was trying to find it. Look, can I get it? Trying to find it somewhere. But you have reading. And then sometimes you just read. And then you can read for a whole hour and you don't even know what you're reading. Right. Yeah. You be like, what did I read? You be like, no, and I got to go read this all over again. Oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> but you got to stay at it. Tell us how you keep organized, how you stay organized, how you, how you, how you do it. In order to stay organized, get you a to-do list. Mm -hmm. Get you a to-do list. And you know what? A lot of people are like, I ain't got time for paper. Mm -hmm. You got to use your smartphone mm -hmm. smartly. Mm -hmm. 
You can use your phone all day long for everything. I fuss at my husband all the time. Put your appointments in there, dude. Mm-hmm. Let it ring. Let it alert you. Yeah. If you need to do something, you can put it in your notes. Android, or whatever it may be. It's all right there. Use your calendars. Mm-hmm. Put it in there to alert you. So then, okay, hey, I got that paper due on week six. I need to make sure I get this stuff in so I don't wait to the last minute. Set your deadlines early. My wife say, what, 7.25? Quarter after, what time is it? 7.17. I said my, my clock fast because <laughs> be sometimes you be late. Sometimes you get hit up in traffic. So then I was like, look, let me, my microwave, everything is a little early. Because you can't be late. You can't be late. And sometimes you still end up being late. Mm-hmm. But use your smartphone. It's one of the best things because now we're going to leave home without it. We take it with us. We take it to the bathroom with yes. us. Everywhere. <laughs> we take it. We in the shower. We ain't even on it. But it's still right there with us. As soon as we wake up in the morning, what do we do? So start using your smartphone. Put it in your calendar. Set your dates. Set your reminders, so then that way it could alert you for when, when you need to do something. It could alert you a week ahead of time, all right, I need to make sure I go ahead and finalize that paper. Right. We, I need to make sure I do my, uh, submit my portion of what I need to submit. Organization is right there on the phone. And so half the time, we don't even, half the time people don't even set their alarms. And they wonder why, I'm just gonna wake up when I wake up. <laughs> I'm gonna let my body wake me up, so I'm gonna use that one. <laughs> use it as motivation. Y'all, I YouTube all day long. Oh, everything yeah. that is everything that you need to know on YouTube, and I tell my I tell my little mentees all the time, if you could go on YouTube and learn how to weave some hair, then you could use this to learn how to uplift yourself. You could use this to learn how to encourage yourself. Find the right motivation. They got all kinds of motivational speeches and stuff that's on here. Use it to uplift yourself because half the time you can't tell everybody that you want what you want to do, right? Right. Because then they're going to come back and they're going to slide that little negativity, mm-hmm. that negative self image. They're going to slide all that in there. And so sometimes you just have to learn to encourage yourself and tell yourself, I can. In my bathroom, on my mirrors, I got all my little sticky notes saying that I am the head, I'm not the tail. Mm-hmm. Everything that I touch will prosper. I am going to make that million dollars by the time I'm 50. I will be on the cover of Essence Magazine. It's getting a little, that one get a little rough. But I'm going to be on the cover of Essence Magazine in, in Essence for something. I don't know what it's going to be. But I'm going to be not and took the cover and I done went in there. As long as I get in there. All right? It may be fabulous at 50, whatever it is. I'm, I'm going to get in there. So you have to start speaking things to yourself and you have to speak it. And you have to be pacific. You have to be pacific about it. My husband came after I did one of my um, Lake Charles event. He was like, well, I need $569.72. And I'm like, what you telling me that for? He said, you said be Pacific. <laughs> <laughs> so you got to be Pacific about what you want. Right. I want to own my own business. I want to prosper. I want to make an additional 3000 a month. I want to average at least 97000 a year. I want to start, I want to be in the field. I want to have my home by the time of this. I want to repair my credit. So that means y'all need to start getting women's bridging and doing what you got to do to make those things happen. I want to go ahead and get my credit aligned. By the time I want to be able to um, save this much amount of money, be pacific about what you want to happen. Other than that, we just going on shit or what it could have. Mm-hmm. We're going on shit over the cutters. I listened to Les Brown, and Les said that there's one place here that have all the dreams, all your visions, all your goals, everything that you ever want. It's one place that have it all right here. Y'all know what that place is? It's the graveyard. Because in the graveyard, you got so many people that are there, and they never did do what they want to do. Mm-hmm. You have so many people that are there and they never did accomplish anything that they ever wanted to accomplish. My grandfather is dead in the grave. He was an excellent, excellent chef from Mississippi State. He probably had four cookbooks. They went to the grave with him. My grandmother was a speaker for women. She uplifted women, did all kinds. She was the go-to person. She all kinds of abuse that she endured, being molested by her own stepmother. She had books in her. She never got a chance to do it. Don't wait and be like, you know what, I should have did that. Don't wait and be like, 
I should have went on ahead and finished school. Don't wait. I should have went on ahead and got my MBA. <coughs> Go ahead and do it now. Because we all, you, the preacher said all the time, ain't nothing promised, right? Mm -hmm. The little boy that was on Seagan Lane the other day that said he hit the woman and killed her just because? Right. The man, yeah, right. it hit the car. Yeah. He said God told him to do it. Now we know it wasn't God, but he said he just selected the car and he went and he rammed that woman so hard that it set her car on fire and it killed her in the car. Yeah. It was all over the news. Right. And just for no reason. Who was that, um, the lady from the museum? Oh, yes. Oh, yeah. Because of late rent. Right. Y'all, do what do what you want to do. Do mm. what your heart desires. Mm. Do what you dream. Make your vision boards. Yeah. I got a vision board. Make your vision board. My first vision board, I went back and looked at it. It was from 1992 when I first went to college. And I went back and I pulled it out, and it was amazing because it was like 06 when we moved into our house. And some of the stuff that was on the vision board, I was like, man, I did some of that. So then I had my students started doing vision boards. And now they come back and they tell me, you know what, we did some of that. Y'all got to start writing your goals out, writing your visions out, and you got to start putting it out there. The same way you speak to yourself, when y'all doing your testing, you be like, I got to do this, I got to speak those affirmations to yourself. <laughs> because it's all within you. It's all within you. Master P said, ain't no limit. I still stick with that. I don't like him, but I still stick with him. <laughs> he don't see no limit, do we? He did just about everything. We the only ones that limit ourselves. I always end with the story. You have a lion and you have a gazelle. The lion and the gazelle, two different animals, right? The gazelle gets up every morning running. That's what the gazelle does. They run. And in their mind, they have to run faster than the other one, otherwise they're going to get ate, right? Mm -hmm. So they just run. The lion gets up in the morning, and he gets up, and he's like, I got to eat. Mm -hmm. So he go, and he go look, and he search for food. The difference between the gazelle and the lion is that one is always running from something, and the lion is always running too. Mm -hmm. So which one is you going to be? You're going to be running from something all your life and be like, you know what, I'm going to put it... Mm -hmm. Lack of organization, I'm going to throw it off. Procrastination, mm -hmm. I'm going to throw it off. Well, you know what? The time not right for this business, I'm going to throw it off. Or somebody else got that business on the other side of town, mm -hmm. I can't do it now. Mm -hmm. I'm going to throw it off. Ah, you got to go get it. Another thing about the lion that killed me was the lion ain't the biggest animal in the jungle. Mm -hmm. Well, he the what? King. King of the jungle. <laughs> he ain't the fastest person in the jungle, but he what? King of the jungle. He ain't the smartest thing in the jungle, but he what? He the king of the jungle. He ain't the tallest, but he the king. He ain't the smallest to, to maneuver, but he the king. But it's his attitude that tell him, this is my accident. I can have whatever I want, whenever I want, and I'm going to go get it. So we got to have that same mentality. Right. The other story, the last story, is the giraffe and the turtle. The giraffe is high, right? Mm -hmm. He has to eat from the top of the leaves. Mm -hmm. He can't look down. The giraffe heart is 25 pounds. So the giraffe heart pumps the blood up his neck. So if he leans over and leans down, then it could kill him. The turtle is small. Turtle down there, he lift his little head up, he do this thing. But sometimes we listen to the turtles, y'all. Mm -hmm. Not that it's a bad thing all the time, but the turtle can't see what the giraffe sees. And if the giraffe leans down to the turtle level, it can wipe him out. Sometimes you have to be careful who you're listening to. Mm. Because when you're made to be tall and you're made to be up there, then that's where you need to be at. Not that the turtle is bad, but the turtle, like they said, only talks and only live on the level that they are. <laughs> Which one are you? Are you the lion, the gazelle? Mm. Are you the turtle? Or the giraffe. Hmm. You gotta go get what you want. The opportunity is now, there ain't no need to wait, and everything that we need is like right here, accessible to us. We are in the peak of technology, and everything is right there for us. You just gotta go get it. You gotta go get it. And that's awesome. Any questions or anything, y'all? That's my motivation for the rest of the week.
Get out! 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 Get out!